We are happy for you visiting uh, us here uh, in the conference and uh, in Israel now. Um, our next speaker, as you can guess, is my friend uh, Professor uh, Yuval Shavit. Yuval Shavit is a professor of electrical engineering in Tel Aviv University. He has uh, published uh, papers in the fields of uh, caching, routing, and network, and network uh, uh, measurements. In 2004, he incepted the DIMES project for mapping the internet infrastructure used by uh, acad academians worldwide. In 2014, he established a BGP project, a company that uses the DIMES approach to protect ISPs and companies against IP hijack attacks. Professor Yuval Shavit, please. Hi, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, uh, a paper that will be uh, presented uh, in the uh, next Usenix in uh, Austin. As you can see, uh, we're competing with experimental physics with a number of authors. Uh, uh, the project actually started by Nimrod, who is uh, my uh, PhD student, and uh, as things become uh, uh, more involved, we, we got Sebastian uh, uh, Munster. Uh, uh, to join us, and then it's become even more, ever more involved, and we had to get more and more groups to help us with different aspects of the of this work. It's really an enormous work, and what I want to present to you here, because of time limitation, but also because it's really only the beginning. We expect to get the full blown effect of this discovery only in two years from now. So uh, this is really only the beginning. So. Uh, one surprising thing for everybody uh, to see in a, in a 2016 in a security conference is the term SSL version 2. This is probably, the, well, one of the oldest crypto protocols. It started 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. And actually, nobody really uses it. We know for a fact, this is no big news, that it's really, really a, a, a vulnerable uh, Protocol. Actually, it is so vulnerable, it's so bad protocol that uh, it was in use for uh, basically a year. And we know for a fact that there's no client today that is using SSLv2. I mean, you cannot. It, it is not supported by any of the uh, current operating system, even if, even if you go two generations back. So there's no SSL in sight. So why am I bothered about SSL version? So, before this uh, 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 ground war, the general wisdom was, you know, SSL v2 is a horrible protocol, but, you know, if you let your server uh, 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 be configured to actually answer SSL v2 uh, queries or, or uh, start a handshake, it's no big deal because what's the harm? If somebody is stupid enough to use it, why should I care? Uh, and what I want to tell you now, this is, you know, after this slide you can go home. It's all I want to tell you is that uh, what we showed is that SSL can be actually used as a, a disguised oracle. And we can use it in order to, and we can use it uh, as a decryption server. They did that there's a victim client and a victim server. And they are both careful enough to use the latest TLS version. This is a very good protocol, very hard to define. What the attacker is doing is that the attacker is passively listening to this communication. And at the same time, uses SSL2 as, as, as an oracle towards the uh, uh, so, uh, we use the black and buffer attack, I'm going to tell you in a minute what it is. And we found out that if you, by, by, by querying uh, close to 40 million HTTPS servers in the internet, this is almost all the servers you can find in the internet, but about 70% of those that support HTTPS also have SSL v2 enabled. 
this is amazing. Yeah. Because nobody is, I mean, you, you talk to people and say, why, why, do you, why do you enable this version too? Well, you get the story, you know, maybe there's some old hardware somewhere in the Red World that is still using, you know, why not having it? So this is already bad news. And when I say that, uh, okay, so this is all bad. The thing here, and this is even more interesting, we can use SSL too, not only as a cross a protocol, but also as a cross server for us. What we can do is we can find email servers that support SSL v2. And even though the HTTPS server in the same level doesn't support it, but guess what? We're using the same key. So, what can be done now is that we can listen to the HTTPS, HTTPS communication between the client and the server. The HTTPS server carefully is not supporting SSL However, there's another server in this system, a main server, that does support SSL v2, and they're using the same keys. So we use the main server as our oracle for attacking the HTTPS server. How often do you think this will happen? Yeah, I'm, I'm joining the club. How often do you think this happens? <laughs> well, about a third of the keys. So one third of the internet was susceptible to this type of attack. And once you're aware of this, doing the attack right is not the problem. So, actually, publishing this was a, a major uh, administrative effort to make sure that we don't do this, that nothing leaks before the actual uh, patch is already, and everybody knows that it's wrong. So, as, one thing I told you is that in order to do this attack, uh, I'm going to get into numbers in the, in the slide. I may, have, I may have a slide with one number. So the first stage of the attack is actually passively listening to many TLS sessions. How many? Well, depends on the, the many uh, variants of the attack, but roughly 1,000 sessions. Say, how do I get to listen to 1,000 sessions? So this brings me to another, the other thing I care about in my uh, work. And this is the IP hijack attack. So if you want to be able to listen to many connections passively, all you need to do is make traffic go through your own network. How do you do this? You do hijack attack. I'll give you an example here. This is a, a hijack attack I measured uh, about four months ago. What you see on the right-hand side is traffic from Strasbourg, France, to Israel, going through Frankfurt and London. This is a regular route. And then somebody in Moscow decided that some interesting things are said here. So, what you can see here is that now traffic is diverted. Well, it's, it's, it's hard to see. I didn't put numbers about where traffic goes. And there's not a single route here, but uh, traffic goes basically to Frankfurt, then to Amsterdam, and then to Moscow, and then you know, it travels around. So this guy in Moscow can easily get 1,000 sessions. Okay, so, uh, how does TLS handshake work? Uh, the client and server goes uh, and generate a uh, random number and exchange it. And then uh, the client has to generate this uh, pre-master uh, secret, which is a small image in SSL. And the decryption uh, well, the, the textbook description is really simple. You take the secret, you know, you, you put it, 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 raise it to some exponent, you do modulo n. Um, however, in many, many cases, the secret is small, and then you need to pad it. And padding is really the problem because now you have a structure, and you can uh, uh, try and guess uh, the secret by putting it up. Uh, queries to <coughs> the server. But in order for you to be able to guess, you need an oracle. <coughs> you need a way to say if your guess is correct or not. How do you do this? That this is the general button of attack. So, what happens if the pad 
adding to the DDs is incorrect. So the you know the server is getting this message, and you know you know it knows it should stop with zero 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 two, and it doesn't stop with it. So it knows that somebody was playing with this. Okay? So what can we do? Well, of course you can set an error. But this is ridiculous. I mean, this is a classical uh, way for me to know uh, if I guess it's right or not. So uh, the solution is is not to do this. Uh, how can I do this? So the solution was in uh, generating some. If I if I, if I get if I get this, uh, the, the, the padding bit wrong, instead of saying no, you're wrong, I'm going to pretend as if everything is okay, and we're going to send uh, a replacement payment, yeah, uh, with some random. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Like okay. Ah, uh, okay. So with some uh, 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 random uh, uh, key. So this seems to be okay because now I can do random key and, uh, uh, and, and, and if I send something, I, I cannot tell if I'm wrong or right. Uh, there are known, uh, initially we were trying to attack this actually by um, trying to, f uh, to see if there are uh, timing differences between uh, generating random key or just using the key, but we don't have to actually because uh, what I can do uh, I'm going to uh, uh, skip this. What I can do is that if I can send the same wrong key twice to the server, it will generate two random keys, and I can see that the two answers doesn't match. So nothing is, is new. So it, it didn't help the server at all, the fact that it's generating random keys. So uh, these are the two cases. So basically, if I, if, if I get the... Uh, uh, the secret right, I'm getting the same two answers, otherwise I get it two different answers, and I haven't gotten a record now. Um, I think I'm gonna uh, skip this, and um, so this is how a, a, a typical scenario works. So first I'm recording about 1,000 uh, uh, TLS uh, connections. Uh, the numbers come from the fact that the attack is statistical, so I'm not gonna be able to break every connection, but if I'm getting a thousand of them, I'm going to get enough. Um, uh, I do the uh, uh, padding attack. And the nice thing about it is that the client, of course, is not suspicious. He never has to do anything with SSL. He doesn't even have, it to, to have to have it installed. Um, there's a, a th an innovative thing here about fractions, Us using uh, uh, fractions enable us, it, it has to do with the, um, uh, with the field we're using. Uh, I don't think I have time to go into it, but this is a, a very innovative thing that may enable us to actually lower the number of messages we need to do. And the real question at the end is, how costly is this attack? Uh, and I want, I want to jump to this. Uh, so. It seems like I have to get something in the order of 2 to the power of 50 keys. And the question uh, is, uh, uh, how much do I have to invest in order to do this attack? And I would say that 2 to the power of 50 is, is, is an upper bound, really, and we already managed to lower it. Every, not everything is, 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 is tight, so I'm, I'm going to talk, talk about this. So. With a naive approach, we uh, figure we're going to need 114 days and $221,000 to do this. This is not really a practical attack. Yeah. Uh, then uh, with a highly optimized implementation using GPU, we could lower it down to 18000 which is now not even expensive and less than a day. But then... Um, uh, uh, we, we managed to show how to do this with the Amazon. In the process, it takes only eight hours and costs less than $500. So this is something even a kid can do, you know, with its, uh, I don't know, Christmas uh, bonus or something like this. But I, I think that the result of this paper, you know, the technical results are really interesting, but this is a broader audience, and there's a, a take-home message that is more important than the fact that we could actually break in into, you know, TLS. What is happening here 
is that SSL v2 was an export grade protocol, which means that due to request of the, U request of the US government, the protocol was weakened on purpose so that the US government would have access to conversation between foreigners, okay? And what we see is that now, 20 years later, after nobody is still using it, this weaker protocol is hunting us with the very strong protocol we're using today. And now there's a debate in the US about this point. You know, how, whether should we uh, allow the government to force companies to use uh, weaker cryptography in order to allow them to, say, uh, track Al-Qaeda. And what Drone shows, and Drone is not the only uh, attack that is building on this effect, is that when you use weak cryptography today, it may hunt you two decades from now, and you cannot anticipate how this is going to be. So this is the political uh, message I want to pass. Thank you. One short question. Bye.